uh, as practicing anesthesiologists uh, we see hypotension and manage it uh, day in and day out ephedrine or mefentramine and phenylephrine are some of the commonly used uh, drugs to treat it the general teaching at least most of us if not all is uh, if the blood pressure is low and heart rate is low use ephedrine or mefentramine and if the blood pressure is low and the heart rate is high use phenylephrine uh, wouldn't it be better if we had a, a, a more physiological understanding as to why bp is low and manage it uh, more rationally or more physiologically uh, welcome to this episode of duty over the course of uh, the next few slides and few minutes we will try to uh, see how to assess uh, hypotension and manage it more uh, physiologically now in this uh, next slide over here we have uh, the example of a container and its content we have a look at uh, various scenarios wherein uh, we see what is the effect of altering the volume of the container and the content uh, has on the pressure within the container so in the first scenario here we have a container whose volume is about 5 liters filled with about 5 liters of content that gives a certain amount of pressure now if keeping the content volume same at 5 liters if we reduce the volume of the container to about 4 liters by pushing the plunger down the pressure increases similarly keeping the content volume at 5 liters if we increase the volume of the container to about 6 liters by pulling the plunger up the pressure in the system drops down now we saw the effect of altering the volume of the container now if we keep the volume of the container constant at say about 5 liters and reduce the volume of the content from 5 liters to 4 liters it would have an effect of reducing the pressure inside vice versa if the container volume is at 5 liters and we increase the content from 5 to 6 liters obviously the pressure inside goes up now let us replace the container with the vascular tree and the content with cardiac output these are the two principal determinants of the blood pressure the volume of the vascular tree can be altered by modulating the sympathetic outflow thereby altering the diameter of the vessels which in turn affects the volume of the entire vascular tree this um, in turn essentially determines the vascular resistance against which the heart is pumping blood the content can be uh, looked at in terms of the cardiac output which in turn is determined by how many times the heart beat times how many uh, mills of blood it ejects each time that is stroke volume and heart rate stroke volume in turn is determined by the endosteric filling pressure that is the preload and the contractility of the ventricles and thus we can uh, have either normal blood pressure or a high blood pressure or a low blood pressure with a varying combinations of a cardiac output and vascular resistance thus when the bp is low it can be either because cardiac output is low or the vascular resistance is low so as a result of this when we are uh, looking at a patient with uh, low blood pressure the first step at uh, approaching this would be to determine uh, whether it is um, a problem with the cardiac output or a problem with the vascular resistance which is causing low blood pressure so what is considered as uh, hypotension so any blood pressure which is below the normal accepted value for a given person can be considered as hypotension however in general any systolic blood pressure below 90 mm of mercury is what is defined as hypotension 
thus in a hypotensive patient once we identify whether it's a problem with the cardiac output or vascular resistance we can initiate appropriate treatment now if the cardiac output is the cause the next thing we need to look at it is whether it is a decrease in preload whether it is causing hypotension if so we give a volume if it is contractility or rate is the issue we address that by administering uh, inotrope or a agent increasing heart rate contrarily if it is vasodilatation or loss of vascular resistance which is resulting in hypotension we can use a pure alpha 1 agonist or an vasopressor and restore the blood pressure back so in the subsequent slides we will look at how to pick uh, whether it's a problem with the volume or contractility or vascular tone from the monitored parameters there is uh, no need for any special uh, monitoring the standard esa monitoring is more than enough most of the information we need is extracted from the etco2 which gives us uh, information about the cardiac output and the plethysmographic tracing from the pulse oximeter now in the plethysmographic tracing on the pulse oximeter the first thing we look at is the position of the diacrotic notch which gives us an idea about the vascular resistance the second thing we look at is the variation in the amplitude of the plethysmographic trace with respiration which gives us an idea about the volume status now etco2 can be uh, used as a surrogate uh, marker for cardiac uh, output the details were discussed in uh, one of the earlier uh, videos uh, the link to which is provided here uh, just to summarize uh, the etco2 is a function of uh, the amount of blood coming into the lung that is a pulmonary blood flow and the minute ventilation and how they interact with each other and what is the equilibrium which is achieved now if we keep the ventilation constant uh, any variation in etco2 can be explained by variation in the pulmonary blood flow which is a reflection of the right sided output now because the right sided and left sided output are similar uh, etco2 therefore can also be used as a reflection of uh, the systemic uh, cardiac output as well moving on to the plethysmographic tracing of the pulse oximeter the parameter or the feature which uh, reflects the volume status would be the swing in the plethysmographic tracing associated with the positive pressure ventilation now in hypovolemic states this swing is exaggerated now why does this variation happen during positive pressure ventilation during inspiration the intrathoracic pressure is high which offers more resistance to the return of blood from the lower extremities as well as the upper part of the body while during expiration as the intrathoracic pressure drops the degree of resistance offered to the return of blood comes down as a result of which venous return increases thereby preload increases during expiration and decreases during inspiration as a result of which the stroke volume also varies this is translated as the swing in the plethysmographic tracing the second thing we look at in the plethysmographic tracing is the position of the diacrotic notch normally diacrotic notch is present on the down slope of the plethysmographic tracing about 2 thirds of the distance from the apex or the peak if there is vasoconstriction the diacrotic notch starts moving higher up towards the left side and towards the apex as a result of which the amplitude of the pleth tracing looks smaller as well as if the monitor provides uh, something called as pulsatility index it starts coming down the pi starts coming contrarily if there is vasodilatation the diacrotic notch starts moving further 
down the slope towards the right side eventually completely disappearing uh, as a result of this the plot tracing looks a bit exaggerated and if there is an indication of the pi or the pulse annihilation index it shows a higher value this gives us an idea whether the blood pressure variation is because of the change in the vascular tone thus uh, to summarize when we have a patient with low blood pressure a uh, look at the following three parameters the intraocular carbon dioxide dichrotic notch and the respiratory swing in order to choose an appropriate a uh, interpretation of the low bp and also to choose the appropriate intervention now if the bp is low look at the entire carbon dioxide if it is low it suggests more likely that cardiac output is the problem subsequently look at the dichrotic notch if it is normal look at the swing in the plethysmographic tracing if there is an exaggerated swing it is more likely the low cardiac output state is because of hypovolemia the appropriate intervention would be to give a volume bolus now if the bp is low intraocular carbon dioxide is low suggesting an issue with the cardiac output look at the dichrotic notch if the dichrotic notch is normal and the respiratory swing either is absent or it is minimal it's more likely that contractility is the issue an appropriate treatment choice would be an inotrope like a ephedrine or a mefentramine subsequently if the blood pressure is low have a look at the etco2 if the etco2 is normal look at the dichrotic notch the position of the dichrotic notch if it is absent or shifted to the right or further down it is more likely to be uh, a problem with vasodilatation or a vascular resistance problem uh, the respiratory swing is likely to be minimally uh, minimally there or absent in this situation choosing a vasopressor like phenylephrine would be an appropriate choice uh, hopefully Uh, this uh, small explanation about approaching uh, how to treat hypotension was uh, helpful thank you